Here we are, only a few days into September, and already the fire season has begun. Of course, for the human mind, our minds, it's always fire season. Our minds are already, always ready to catch fire. They seem to be awfully dry. Traditional image, simile for the Dharma is that it's water to put out fires of the mind. And what are the fires of the mind? Passion, aversion, delusion. They're like dry grass, just ready to light up as soon as there's the slightest bit of fuel, the slightest bit of spark to get them going. So this is what we have to watch out for, those sparks. That's why restraint of the senses is so important. Before you can get your mind thoroughly watered so that it's not ready to catch flame, you have to be very careful about where you go, what you do, what you think about, what you look at, what you listen to. So that you don't set your mind on fire. The traditional definition of restraint of the senses is that you don't focus on the details that would set you on fire, that if you left your senses unguarded would give rise to greed, aversion, and delusion. Again, it's not the case that greed, aversion, and delusion are coming in from outside. The potential is always there in the mind. So you have to be very careful it's that sparks don't come in. And Set it off. In other words, if you find there's some topic that as soon as you look at it, greed arises, lust arises, don't look there at those particular details. It doesn't mean you have to go around with blinders on your eyes all the time. Simply as you don't focus on the details that set you off. Or you learn to think about the other side of the object. If it's something that would give rise to lust, well, think about the unattractive side. Something that gives rise to anger, displeasure, irritation. Look at its other side. See what good is there is to it. As John Lee used to say, don't be a person with only one eye or one ear. Be a person with two eyes, two ears. There's got to be something good to those things, something good to those people. And if there's nothing good at all, see if it's a person there's nothing good that you can think of at all, you have to feel compassion for that person because they're just really making life worse and worse and worse for themselves. So there's no need to focus on the details that would give rise to anger. Those little details, those are the sparks that set your desiccated mind on fire, your flammable mind on fire. The same goes with things that you might think about. If you see that it suddenly sweeps through your mind, takes up all your attention, takes up all your active time. You've got to do your best to put out the fire, and then watch out for that topic from then on in. It's a spark. But still, we can't go around simply watching out for sparks all the time. We have to learn how to water our minds as well. This is what concentration is like. Concentration is a cool state of mind. Even the word jhana comes from the word for burning, as John Lee used to say, it's a cool fire, a fire that doesn't cause any damage to your mind at all. Again, it starts out as a little spark, but it, bl it burns in a different way. It's a cool, steady burn. You focus on the breath, focus on what details of the breath, what aspects of the breath are really comfortable. Are really appealing, really gratifying. You should breathe in, breathe out. Which parts of the body feel starved for breath energy will give them something. And you find that if you can locate those starved parts of the body, then the sense of refreshment that comes as you breathe right in there is very intense, can be very intense. It gives you something to focus on. Again, it, it's focusing on the details. This is like a spark for cool fire. And then, then this kind of fire you have to look after to make sure that it does catch hold and then it does spread. 
once you've got that comfortable sensation, then think of it going into different parts of the body, or else connecting up with other comfortable sensations that may already be there in the body. Let them connect, let them nourish one another. The top of the head, down to the tips of the fingers, the tips of the toes. And as you do this, you find that this is the, the water of the Dharma that comes in to help make your mind less and less and less flammable. All the parts of the mind that were ready to flare up because they were so dry are now coated in, a, in something wet, something cool. When the mind really is solid in this state, then even though there may be sparks outside in terms of what you see or hear, think about it, the mind just doesn't catch. It doesn't have a lot of flammable material. Because you've soaked it instead with the cool fire of jhana. So this is your protection. If you don't have this protection, you have to be very careful about where you go, what you look at what things you engage in, because the mind is ready to set on fire, the wrong kind of fire, the hot fire that burns and creates smoke and causes all kinds of ignorance, blocks things out. Whereas when you have this alternative kind of fire to consume the mind, then once this consumes the mind, and, and as long as you maintain it, then there's no room for the outside fires to come and catch. Of course, even the fire of jhana is not 100 percent safe, 100 percent guarantee. Sometimes people can develop strong powers of concentration, but if there's no real discernment to go along with it, even that fire can go out, and the mind is then left back to where it was. Same old flammable state. This is why the concentration has to be coupled with discernment. The discernment that see how the how the mind creates these issues, how it makes itself flammable. Sometimes it's not enough for a spark to come by. We go out and pull them in, open ourselves up, hoping for a spark to come by. That's the real problem. The sparks themselves are not all that much. It's our desire to catch on fire. That's the problem. We like our passion, we like our aversion, we like our delusion. So we have to look at that, look at the drawbacks of these things, until they really go deep into the heart, your image, your insight into these drawbacks. See where their allure is, why you might like your passion, aversion, and delusion. You don't deny that. In fact, the better you understand that allure, exactly what kind of gratification do you get out of giving in to passion or lust or greed? What kind of gratification do you get, get out of thinking about all the injustices that have been done to you that make you angry? If it weren't for that kind of gratification, these things wouldn't have any appeal. So see where the gratification is, but then also look at the drawbacks. When you've tabulated both sides, you know that you're looking at them with real objectivity. And then look for the, the escape. Once the drawbacks really go to your heart, that's when the mind is ready to look for the escape. So it can put out those fires. On one level, the practice of jhana is an escape, but ultimately it too has to be you have to get beyond that as well. In the meantime, develop it. Don't analyze it too much. One of the problems of having all these Dharma talks is that people start analyzing stuff way before they're ready. Focus on your breath. Focus on getting a sense of nourishment out of the breath. You know that this is not the ultimate goal that you're working on, but it is the path that leads you there. And if you focus full attention on the path, you get to the goal. You don't have to always keep second-guessing the goal or trying to jump ahead of the steps. 
work on getting the mind saturated with the cool fire of jhana. So it's not constantly flammable, ready to flame up over any topic at all. Once it's fully occupied with the state of absorption, then it gives less and less openings for the gives fewer and fewer openings for the sparks of your sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations and ideas to come in and set the mind on fire. This is your protection. Without this protection, you really have to be careful. You have to hold yourself in very strict restraint. You're like those gas tanks they have in <coughs> trucks that have the big flammable signs on them. They're just ready to <coughs> blow up at the slightest spark. So everything has to be very, very well protected all the time. So keep your protection up. Don't let it down. And in the meantime, work on this cool fire. When this cool fire bathes the mind, okay, then you're then you're a lot safer. You can trust yourself, other people can trust you more too. Because you're not going to flame up in an instant. 